Good morning and welcome to worship. We are gathered as the people of Fieldburg Lutheran Church. This is the 18th Sunday after Pentecost. A couple of announcements as we begin. Please remember that this week on Wednesday, September 29th, we are going to be gathering. We'll have a casual worship service outside. For, this is especially for families and young kids. We would love to have you participate. It's very active and interactive and a, a nice chance for the kids to share in that worship service with the family members. So please join us here at church, six o'clock on Wednesday, the 29th. Also, we'll have confirmation then right after that casual worship service. So please, for the seventh and eighth grade kids, uh, please join us for confirmation. Also on Sunday, um, we will have a gathering for Sunday school for kids from three years old up to second grade. We'll have Sunday school right after our worship time. So please do join us for that. Welcome to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose word is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sin to God, who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. You have shown us your abundance, but we only see scarcity. We ignore injustice and oppression that hold people down. We exploit the earth with our greed and forget those who come after us. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call to you. Lead us by your love, so we love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. Beloved people of God, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the, by the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God restores you and makes you righteous. With glad hearts, receive the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Generous God, your Son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your Spirit, and in all we do, empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Numbers in the 11th chapter. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing. The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up. There is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight, that you lay the burden of all of this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them? that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a suckling child to the land that you promised on oath to your ancestors? Where am I to get meat to give to all the people? For they come weeping to me and say, give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone, but for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you're going to treat me, put me to death at once. If I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, gather for me 70 of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people, officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting and have them take their place there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in a cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon him, they prophesied. But they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Ildad and the other Medad. The Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. And so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant to Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. The word of the Lord. A reading from James, the fifth chapter, beginning with verse 13. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently 
that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on earth. Then he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord. Good morning. Cora and I are gonna read you the story of Noah. Uh -huh. Noah's Ark, okay? Should we start? I'll see if yeah. everybody can see. I can't see. How about you go? There you go. God told Noah, build a boat, fill it with animals. So Noah did. Animals came aboard two by two, from alligators to zebras. Rain came down. The boat flooded. Yes. Water covered the whole earth. When the land dried, God made a rainbow in the sky. God took care of Noah, his family, and all the animals. God takes care of you and your family, right? Yes. Do you like rainbows? Uh-huh. Do we see a lot of rainbows after what? After it rains? Yeah. Like this rain coming down here and this bunny's right there. Yeah. And those and those heavy animals. Yeah, God took care of Noah and all the animals, and he takes care of us every single day, right? Yeah, does he, how about the rainbows? Do they make us find um, the yeah. good things? Yeah. Yeah, we see good things. Even sometimes after storms, bad, bad storms, then there's a rainbow afterwards to look forward to. Should we pray? Mm -hmm. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for teaching us. To care for others. To care for others. Thank you. Thank you. For caring for us. Thank you for caring for us. And our family. And our family. And the animals. And the animals. Teach us. Teach us. To keep looking. To keep looking. For rainbows. For rainbows. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of cold water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you to have a great millstone hung around your neck and you are thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It's better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched for everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
When our family packed up and moved to seminary 21 years ago, it meant a world of change for us. We moved from the Cedar Rapids area into Dubuque. Our standard of living changed dramatically, and we went from owning our own home to living in an apartment on the seminary campus. And all three of our boys had to start over again at brand new schools. Our youngest son, Drake, had completed kindergarten in Cedar Rapids, and now because of this move, he had to get to know a new school two years in a row. It's just not fair. He was a feisty and outspoken little kid, and he did not hesitate for a moment to tell us how dissatisfied he was. And whenever he got mad at his parents about anything that we may have done, then our youngest one would turn and look at me and he would say, you're the one who ruined my life. Yes, everything was perfect back there, back then, back in kindergarten in Cedar Rapids. If only we could just go back to the good old days, then none of these bad things would be happening. In all reality, his emotional outbursts were both exaggerated and gut-wrenching all at the same time. The life that he had at the seminary community really had a lot more opportunities to meet other kids. He had more connections and there were more activities going on than we ever had before. But at the same time, everything that he had known before, everything that was familiar to this little guy, it, it was all yanked away. And, and on top of that, there's a whole lot of responsibility placed on a little six-year-old. He had to navigate a new school, a new neighborhood a new church, and this whole different thing of living in a community of religious people. It wasn't his idea. We just said, go. I think about all of that when I consider this story of the people of Israel wandering in the wilderness. In a lot of ways, it wasn't their idea. They may have wanted freedom, but at some point, abruptly, God just said, go. Their former life as slaves in Egypt, it wasn't that good. But they maybe did know the rhythms and the patterns of their existence, even if painful. But now, this, this wandering in the wilderness, it's hard. Maybe worst of all, it's unpredictable. There is no permanent place. They were constantly picking up and packing up everything and, and moving on to the next place. Their water supply was uncertain and unpredictable. They never had a food supply that they could store up. No, they had to go out each day and collect the manna that God provided. This didn't feel like living to them. And at this stage in their wilderness wandering, it still didn't have an end point in sight. What's the point of all this? What's the point of being dragged out here into the wilderness for this impoverished style of existence? And some began to complain. It wasn't everyone at first, just a disgruntled few. They grumbled and they cried out, if only we had meat to eat. Well, except, except that that really wouldn't be enough because immediately when they started to grumble and complain, well, then they also started adding to the list. Oh yeah, and back then we had cucumbers and, and melons and leeks and garlic and onions and life was so so good back there in Egypt, back in the good old days. 
And, and quickly, the complaining and the whining and the weeping, it spreads through the whole community like gossip among family members, like reposting all that negative stuff on social media. Nothing spreads faster than bad news. So the complaining went throughout all the families of the Israelites. And Moses heard them. He hears them at the entrance to their tents, all of them complaining, you're the one who ruined my life. And the crabby, whining people caused Moses to become a crabby, whining leader. And Moses cries out to God, why, God, why are you treating me so badly? Why won't you be nice to me, God? Why just stick me with these people? But actually, actually there's a much deeper connection between Moses and the people. It's a lot more than just leader and followers. Moses is not just a guide on some expedition. He's more than just their motivational speaker who's supposed to stir them up and keep them excited. Moses and the people, they share a relationship and a bond. But like an exhausted parent, Moses is getting worn out by the weight of the responsibility. Now Moses wants to shout at God, you're the one, God, you're the one who ruined my life. You stuck me with them. And Moses wants to deny the relationship. Moses wants to unhook the connection. Did I conceive all these people? Did I give birth to them? Did I nurse them and feed them? How did I end up with the job of wiping their drippy noses and picking up after all their messes? Tell me, God. Tell me, where am I going to find meat to feed this entire crowd of people. I can't do this alone. If this is how it's going to be, God, just kill me now. I hear the drama in his voice, but I try to remind myself not to be too harsh in our judgment on Moses and the people. Everything in their world is in a state of upheaval. But still, Moses, still, you need to remember something. You've never been alone on this journey. You've always had the God of all creation on this journey with you. And we hear that God is getting angry with the people too. And yet, even in this moment of anger, it's almost like God takes a deep breath. God pauses and decides to regroup. God's going to work on the relationship and try to help them one more time. Moses, here's what you're going to do. Gather 70 elders of the people. Gather them with you. And when they gathered, God came near. And God took some of the spirit that was with Moses and God gave that spirit to 70 of the elders. And they, they spoke the word of God. Oh, and there were two others, Eldad and Medad. They stayed back in the camp. They didn't gather there with Moses and the 70 others. But the Spirit of God 
came on those two, on Eldad and Medad also. And the two of them, they spoke the word of God. Joshua came running over to Moses. Moses, you've got to stop them. They aren't part of the official group over here. Moses responds, it would be great. It would be great if all of God's people could be prophets. And if God put the spirit on everyone. Living as God's faithful people is never easy. When our lives go through times of disruption and disorientation and change, like maybe now or maybe like it's been for generations, when our lives go through that disruption and change, we get afraid. Sometimes we panic and we forget that God is always with us. Instead, sometimes we start yearning for good old days, back then when everything was perfect. I recall that my dad used to say, people are always telling me how good things were in the 1950s. I lived through the 50s, he said. They weren't that good. But still, we have this nostalgic tendency to look back. And when we're looking backwards, we fail to see the good that God is doing right here, right now. Sometimes, all of us, people and leaders, we forget, we've never been alone on this journey. God is moving through all of it with us, and it's going to be good. Even if the journey is long and difficult, and, and we don't quite know what the end looks like, the journey is good, and God is with us. And along the way, God gives us each other, talented and gifted people, and God pours out the Spirit on all of us. We get it wrong when we think we have to do it all by ourselves. God has given us some amazing things. God has given us his own Spirit and the gift of each other. Hold on to each other, hold together, love each other, and help each other, especially in the tough times. Amen.
in our journey in life, in our journey through a pandemic. God keeps doing things with us, among us, and helping us on the way. As we work towards this capital campaign and building up the ministry that we share here at Fieldburg, God is with us on the way. And you have responded to God's call and you have responded to God's generosity, making wonderful ministry happen together. For that, we join together in our offering prayer. God of abundance, you make streams break forth in the desert and manna rain from the heavens. Accept our gifts, which you have first given to us. Unite these gifts with the offering of our whole lives. Use them to nourish this world that you love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As children of God, confident in God's promises, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of community, send leaders and guides to care for your church. Grant vision and direction to your people so we may serve you and proclaim the good news in ways that draw others to you. God of majesty, move us to be awed by the wonders of your creation. Help us to see the wonderful complexity of life and the delicate balance of nature. Direct our choices so we care for this world that you have made. God of mercy, give kind and humble hearts to those in authority. Place in them a desire to care for the vulnerable and the suffering, for refugees and children, and for all who are at risk. God of healing and help, be with those who have cancer or memory loss or any form of disease. Bring hope to those who are grieving. Grant friendships to those who are alone. We remember especially all whom we name to you. Let your goodness go out to them. God of kindness, strengthen the ministries of this congregation. Use us to shine the light of your love to our neighbors and to our community. Make us witnesses to your grace and compassion. Ever living God, in every generation you have sent faithful servants who lifted others and guided them in the way of Jesus Christ. Inspire us by their example, so that we also support and sustain others as they grow in faith. We give our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life into a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace. The living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God.